Peggy 16. I'm Christian Sadak, Senior Designer for Zipper Interactive. Today we'll be exploring the various ways you can enjoy our first PlayStation Vita title, Unit 13. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about all five of our game types and explain the rules and gameplay differences that make each method of play fun and exciting. Direct Action is the first game type unlocked on the Mission Grid and will be the first game type you'll get to play. Direct Action missions are definitely the longest game type in Unit 13 and don't have any special restrictions. Each Direct Action mission also has a diverse collection of objectives that your operative can undertake, whether it's planning a surveillance device, obtaining intel, or neutralizing an enemy leader. Of course, all Direct Action missions allow players to take multiple routes, which encourages players to experiment with alternate paths and characters each time they play. Speaking of which, I recommend using Animal, Chuckles, or Python for Direct Action missions. Their not-so-subtle approach and gear that goes boom is ideal for multi-point situations. Our Covert game type is the mode that's quickest to play, and it's all about using stealth as your primary means of advancement. Your goal here is to get through the mission without being seen or setting off alarms. In Covert missions, pay attention to the icons above your enemy's heads. If you haven't been spotted, but a bad guy has seen or heard something, then a suspicious icon appears over their head. In fact, use Ringo. Not only will you take out enemies quietly and efficiently with a suppressed submachine gun, but you'll also receive big scoring bonuses thanks to his collection of short range and stealthy bonus skills. If you are detected, the enemy's awareness changes to alert it, and once they call their buddies over the radio, it's game over. That's why it's important to eliminate the enemies that see you before they can call any alarm. Do that and you're in the clear. It should be noted that if you're spotted by an enemy camera, you'll have to take it out quickly or risk failing the mission. And activating a laser tripwire automatically fails the mission. Just remember to stay hidden and don't get spotted in the first place. Avoid enemies, use suppressed weapons, avoid sprinting, use cover, and melee your enemies to keep from making too much noise. Of course, if you're really good, then it's possible to complete covert missions without eliminating a single bad guy. In fact, you get a big scoring bonus if you can pull it off. One last tip for covert. Build Ringo up to level 4 to unlock the small suppressor attachment for the entire team. With that setup, Alabama is a great choice here as he'll then be able to take out enemies quietly from a distance. Chuckle's ability to spot electronic hazards is helpful too. The Deadline game type is Race Against Time. When playing this mode, your primary goal is to get in, complete your objectives quickly, and escape before time runs out. The good news is that your time and deadline isn't absolute. You can earn more time by reaching checkpoints, which makes speedy navigation and quick thinking your number one ally. Python and his machine gun and Chuckle's upgraded assault rifle are perfect for the running gun nature of Deadline. If you can avoid getting shot, Ringo has the fastest movement and can get the best times, but he's also the most fragile, making him an effective but advanced choice. A good tip to remember for all Deadline missions, regardless of their objectives, is to avoid sneaking around, trying to defuse every charge, or do other time-consuming things. You'll get more points for finishing quickly anyway, and you'll lessen your chances of running out of time on the clock. Don't underestimate the usefulness of flashbangs and smoke grenades in this mode either. They can stun and distract your enemies and hide your movements in a pinch. Our Elite game type will test your skills. Unlike our other game modes, Elite has a health bar to watch instead of regenerating health. Plus, if you die, you can't restart from checkpoints. You'll have to start the mission all over again. Don't get too intimidated though. Elite missions aren't as long as some of the other game types and your health refills when you hit the checkpoints. Just remember to avoid getting hit. More health at the checkpoints means more bonus points when you're done. Less health means fewer points. There is one exception though. Zeus's red line skill bonus racks up more points when he's low on health. And since health doesn't regenerate in Elite, you can use this skill to earn massive bonus points. Speaking of Zeus, while he and Python are the toughest guys on the squad with the most health, that doesn't mean that they're the best choices for your style of play. Alabama and a suppressor can do major damage from afar, while his claymores allow you to take out enemies tactically while avoiding harm. If you run into too much trouble with the Elite, remember use cover and suppressed weapons often, and watch for place traps. 
and you definitely don't want to run into the elite exclusive poison gas traps. Our last game type is our high value targets mode or HVTs. HVTs are only unlocked after earning enough stars in the other missions. High value targets are the supreme enemy leaders, the worst of the worst, and they need to be eliminated. Though your health regenerates as normal in the HVT game type, there aren't any checkpoints to save you on your way to each leader. And like Elite, these missions aren't going to be easy. They're highly challenging and offer unique boss battles at the end, unlike our other missions. Win an HVT mission and you'll have plenty to brag about to your friends. And you'll be able to share that mission using the PlayStation Vita's Near feature. But we'll be back with more on what you can do with Near and also explore Unit 13's unique feature set in regards to sharing and competing with your buddies. Until next time, my name is Christian Sadak. Thanks for watching.